Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today we're going to be checking out Virtual Desktop on the Oculus Quest. Now we know that the Oculus Quest is an awesome device for gaming, but what about using it as a useful tool for streaming content from your PC to your headset? Well, that's where Virtual Desktop comes in. This application allows you to play your favorite PC games or watch movies from your PC on your Oculus Quest. And this could be in another room within your house, or you can even remotely access your PC desktop from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. Now, Virtual Desktop will be launching on Oculus Quest on the 21st of May. I don't have any details on pricing just yet, but also it's just worth noting that right now the application isn't compatible with Mac, and it also can't stream VR 180 movie content. However, both of these features are on the roadmap and coming in the near future. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to pair an Xbox One S controller to your Oculus Quest so we can remotely play some PC games using a gamepad, how to get virtual desktop up and running, and then I'll be showing you how well it performs streaming games and movie content remotely from your PC. Finally, at the end of the video, I'll give you my final thoughts on this application and also some comparisons to Big Screen, which will also be available on Quest for launch that offers some similar functionality. I hope you guys and girls enjoy this one. And without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so before we get into how to set up Virtual Desktop itself, I'll show you how to pair an Xbox One S controller to your Oculus Quest. This is so we can remotely play games streamed from our PC. All you need to do is open the Oculus app on your phone, go to settings and ensure the headset is turned on and on the same Wi-Fi network. Select it from the drop down menu and then select controllers. You'll then see an option to pair a new controller and then just press pair gamepad. Press and hold the pairing button on the top of the Xbox One controller to enable pairing mode and you'll see the Xbox light flash quickly and then both devices should connect and pair. Once paired the Xbox light on the controller will go solid and it will be added to your controller list within the Oculus app. Other Bluetooth controllers are supported but in my testing previously with the Oculus Go the Xbox One S controller came out on top. You'll need to ensure that you get the S version of the Xbox One controller, which supports Bluetooth. I've put my Amazon affiliate links in the description down below if you're interested in picking one up yourself. Although the Oculus Quest supports Bluetooth controllers, it's worth noting that it doesn't support Bluetooth headphones at the moment. Now let's download and install the virtual desktop streaming application on the PC. Simply go to the virtual desktop website, which I've linked in the description down below, and download the mobile streaming app for Oculus Quest. Once downloaded, install the application and once completed you'll see this window pop up which gives you a few options. Just add your Oculus username in the box and click save. If you're unsure what your Oculus username is, just put the Oculus Quest headset on and in Oculus Home you'll see on the menu your profile picture at the bottom. Click on that and it will let you know what your username is. On the desktop app, I'd also recommend ticking the box that says use touch input. Also on your desktop, if you go to your taskbar and right click on it, you want to enable show touch keyboard button within your taskbar. This is so you can use a virtual keyboard when in VR, which I'll show you later on in the video. Now let's get onto the fun part and that's jumping into VR and showing you what you can do with this awesome application. Okay, so here we are in the main menu of Virtual Desktop. Now when you fire up the application, it will automatically connect to your PC, but I disconnected and I'll reconnect just to show you how it works. Uh, it's got some information here. So at the top right, it's got information about the battery status of your touch controllers and the headset itself. And then at the bottom, some frame rates, uh, CPU utilization, GPU utilization on the Quest headset itself. Itself. Here we've got my uh, desktop which we're going to connect to and as you can see just above it it says that we're connected to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection running at around 866 megabytes per second which is a pretty decent connection. So here we go we're going to connect to my desktop now and as you can see my desktop magically pops up. The environment that is shown here is a void environment. It's just a big open space. But what I want to show you is really cool and this is the computer room. Uh, it's really cool. We've got like a, a monitor in front of us that looks 
a nice workable size uh, a keyboard obviously which is you can't use this but you could use a keyboard if you wanted to you've got a pc here you've got some really funky oculus posters on the wall like this one uh, featuring uh, palmer lucky in the middle uh, nate mitchell and brendan arib john carmack and of course uh, mark zuckerberg you've got some great prototype headsets on the shelf there the oculus uh, subreddit avatar <laughs> in the corner uh, some funny sort of like little news snippets behind us and then the cool thing is now we can look behind the monitor which we couldn't obviously do on the oculus go because it was a three degrees of freedom headset so now we can have a quick look at that and it's got this vr wars poster with palmer with the iconic time magazine pose in the middle so now we're here on our desktop we can do a few things uh, we can interact with the desktop itself all you need to do is push the trigger i want to uh, open an application i just double tap on the trigger button or you can drag just like you can with the left mouse button if you want to right click it's just the uh B button on your oculus touch controller and you can sort of delete things and do other bits and pieces with that so they're the sort of main two buttons you will use um, and then of course like I showed you earlier you've got this virtual keyboard which you can use to input um, some text if you want to do that into a web browser or whatever so let's do something really fun first and let's show you what it's like uh, remotely playing a game on my PC now this uh, controller is paired directly to the headset and not my PC so basically what's happening is all the input and all the data is going through the headset to my PC and back again through my local 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection the last time I tested this on the oculus go I tested it using Tomb Raider and that was on a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection and now I'm using a 5 gigahertz connection so it's going to be interesting to see how it performs. So to make sure you can use your gamepad you just need to go into the settings and press emulate gamepad on PC and then you should be good to go. So here we are in World War Z and as you can see it looks really nice. Let's kill some zombies. Oh wow. This is very much like uh, Left 4 Dead, but latency is uh, pretty good, especially over the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. Because of the uh, resolution of the quest being pretty high, everything looks pretty sharp. Oh my days! What happened there? <laughs> Got pounced on by a lurker. Oh, he's a... Oh, look at this guy. Wearing all the riot armor. My days. He's a beast. He's not happy either. Ah! Uh -oh. Yeah, we did it. Thanks. He had Sit down. Know your place. Oh, this game is so gross. In the best way possible. Oh. Oh, wow. So now we're back on the desktop, I can show you how to switch between other monitors. So if you've got a multiple monitor set up, you can switch to a second monitor. And as you can see here, this is me recording my video, a little sneak peek behind the scenes. Now if we switch back to my other monitor, but let's just watch a, a normal movie first. And uh, let's start with one of my favorites, uh, Ready Player One. But let's move to a, a more fitting environment, something like the dark cinema, which I think is the ideal location to watch uh, movies. I love this part of the movie, it's so good. Of course, this is Ready Player One. If you haven't seen this and you're a VR enthusiast, you need to watch this movie, it's so great. <laughs> that DeLorean is so badass. Okay. That is enough, I don't want to spoil the movie if you haven't seen it already, but needless to say, watching movies is great. Okay, so this is to show you how 3D SBS movies work in VR. Now, I highly recommend trying this out. 3D movies in VR just look incredible, way better than on a traditional uh, sort of TV or in a cinema. And basically, all we need to do is, this is a Dread in 3D, one of my favorite movies. It's incredible in 3D, by the way, well worth checking out. Uh, this is SBS, so all you need to do to run it uh, in SBS mode is to click away from the, uh, the screen, and then you've got some options down here to switch monitor, and you've got a couple of different modes here. So half FBS, SBS is what we want to enable this, and then we can just click play, and here we go. This is full SBS mode. Judge Dread, and this scene is 
awesome scene from the movie. Loads of 3D in this scene. That just looks so freaking cool. This is so good. It looks so, so good. So now let's jump back to the computer room and I'll just show you one more thing. We're back on our desktop and then I can show you just quickly what it's like to use, you know, normal web browsing features or some sort of productivity uh, using the desktop as well. So here we are on my Twitter page. If you don't follow me on Twitter already, uh, you totally should. I post a lot of stuff behind the scenes, some bits and pieces that you should know about, uh, little video clips and generally stuff what I'm up to. So if you're interested, you can follow me on Twitter. It's just VR underscore Oasis. But let's send a little tweet from within VR because we're totally awesome like that. And as you can see, the little keyboard has popped up at the bottom. So let me type this out. I'm sending this tweet from Virtual Desktop on Oculus Quest and add a little image which I prepared earlier and tweet that out. And there we go. That is my tweet sent. So you can send tweets from within VR, about VR. Feels like we're genuinely living in the future. So awesome. So let's jump straight to the outro where I can talk more about how I feel about this app and some comparisons with other apps that are available. Okay, so there we have it guys and girls. That's Virtual Desktop on the Oculus Quest. Now I tested the range even further after recording this gameplay and even when testing playing games on the other side of the house, performance in game was rock solid. Of course, this will all be dependent on your Wi-Fi speed. For reference, I'm using a TP-Link Archer C2300 5 GHz router, and 5 GHz is definitely recommended for the best possible experience. Now, cross-buy between Oculus Go, Gear VR, and Quest won't be available on launch. The developer, Guy Godin, did want this enabled, but sadly, due to things out of his control, it just won't be possible for launch, but might be coming later on. So just like on the Oculus Go, a virtual desktop on the Oculus Quest is a really useful application. It's very easy to set up, and the user interface is easy and intuitive to use. It's ideal if you want to stream games and video content to other rooms within your house. And I can't wait to be lying in bed, remotely playing my favorite PC games whilst in VR. You can even remotely access your PC from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. Now there's no functionality to access locally stored video files on the headset. There are other free applications that you can do that with, like Oculus Gallery for example, which is included with the Oculus Quest. Due to the Quest's OLED and high resolution displays, watching movies and games in VR is awesome and it's definitely well worth checking out. The other app that will be available for Quest on launch is Big Screen, which has some similar functionality. To compare them, I would say Virtual Desktop is best suited for the single player experience, playing games and watching movies alone. However, if you want to watch movies with friends and have more of a social experience, then Big Screen will definitely be well worth checking out. Also, official paid movie events will be coming to big screen in the very near future, so stay tuned for more information about that soon. But let me know what you guys and girls think of Virtual Desktop on the Oculus Quest. Do you think it will be a useful application for you? If so, what use cases do you have in mind for it? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like this video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.